everybody, welcome to Leon's Chainsaw Parts and Repair. I hope you all had a great Christmas. Today is the 26th, so I am, what is it now, 11.30, just now traipsing out to the shop and putting parts on the website all morning. It's cold here, uh, cold and clear. Uh, that wind's coming right out of the north. Yeah, it's not as cold as a lot of places, but for me, it's cold. So I've been enjoying that nice warm house and warm fireplace today. So, you guys have seen this particular view, looking down at the bench a bazillion times. Uh, we're going to do something about that today. I'm going to give you a quick tour of the, the shop. It's a two-car garage uh, with more crap stuffed into it than... Oh, any reasonable person would do, but I'm not a reasonable person, so we're okay. Uh, just a quick look here on the bench before we move away. I'm working on this uh, Terry Built Super 2. Uh, I need to take a peek on the House of Homelight and see if Al's list that he's working on has this UT number on it or not. ton of information there. That gentleman has undertaken one hell of a task. For you hardcore guys, you know that Homelight put out publications that uh, listed when a model was last built. They sorted them by the UT number, but Homelight in the United States did a great job. Homelight Terry in Canada, th that's not documented well at all. So Al's been working on uh, a list as people collect saws, they pop up on the internet, eBay, places like that. If they've got a UT number posted and a model number that can be discerned, he's recording all that. So he's got this beautiful running list on House of Homelight. I'll put a link in the video to that uh, down in the description. You guys ought to check it out. But anyway, I, uh, this thing will run on high speed but not on low. That's uncommon to say the least, at least in my experience, on an HDC single needle carburetor. But somehow uh, in two go-arounds with it I've missed whatever the hell the problem is so at some point it'll come apart again these other two pieces are I wanted to show you what I've been working on uh, this oh a gentleman got a hold of me know, three four months ago about buying some uh, some parts he uh, his buddy was a home light dealer in uh, New Hampshire can't remember off the top of my head where it didn't really matter but uh, Graydon saved these parts from basically the dumpster and a great example of why that's important is how often do you see a unused 750 fuel tank? Not very often. Same thing for a 450. I believe it's a 450. I'm gonna have to clean it up and measure the bore. Uh, crankcase and cylinder. I mean, yeah, the old boot has gone to pot and I'll have to clean that up. And of course somebody <laughs> scavenged the damn oil pump off of it. I'll see if I can find one of those in my junk pile and at least put this back to where it was. But look at the coating of dust and grease and just crap. A lot of these parts have had that. So the body parts have had to come out here for a bath. Let me see, I've got some other stuff laying around like this. Whiz style. This was used. So that doesn't totally count, but this whiz style starter still in pretty good shape, but you couldn't even see the blue through all the crap. Same thing for some of these muffler diffusers, you know, just coated and coated with stuff. So these pieces are sitting here to get that bath, get cleaned up. I'll dry them out next to the fireplace and then uh, get some pictures that make them look like something other than total trash. And Look at that, I dropped a piece of home light packing in my coffee. Uh, 10 second rule, right? So anyway, back to the original. Purpose of the video, I wanted to show you guys around the shop a little bit. Get this viewfinder changed over. We'll do the customary shot of the workbench. Yes, it's a mess, I know it's hard to work in. Eh, I'm used to it, whatever. So if you got a comment about my messy workbench, keep it to yourself. So, tools of the trade. We've got a lot of small parts, screws, junk like that. You know, the sprocket rims. What else do we have up here? Fuel tank screws for Super XLs. Some of the other 
Super XL type screws. Bar nuts, you know, just that kind of stuff. Really common things I keep on hand right there. Gotta have the blue work gloves, tools. Now sometimes you guys see a shot of this all in the background. Most of this stuff I've got hanging up here because I save it for something I might want to use. Some of it's sorted and I'll pull it down for repair like the bars and all that, but or excuse me, the bars are a great example of what I'm holding on to. Uh, so, yeah, if I've told you I don't have one for sale, and you see something in my video, go, wait a minute, he said he didn't have one. No, no, I said I didn't have one for sale. I've mentioned before I don't sell everything that I get in. All right, we'll get back. Uh, there's a bunch of the bigger parts. I've got bin numbers. Those bins, that was the the first big lot I bought. Uh, and ironically, that was from New Hampshire as well. And that had to have been five, six years ago by now. Uh, and those parts were shipped across the country in those totes right there. So that's full of most of the larger parts. Uh, I can tell you just off the top of my head, box number four is where tons of pistons are. About 43 410 air filters are in number 16 there. Number 46 has almost all the clutch parts. And then any handle cover you could ever possibly need and probably don't want is buried in old 47 right there. Uh, we've got more parts tucked away in here. Uh, I've got two drawers pretty much dedicated to the... These two are pretty much dedicated to the Super 2 and XL style saws. Super XL, these four, then some various coils and stuff up there. A tool bin right there. Yeah, that's not conveniently located, but it gets it up out of the way. My rail closer, the pullers, you can see the tip of the bar stud insert tool sticking up there. Got some of my collection tucked away up there. There's the C9 I restored. A very nice looking limited edition Super uh, XL Old Blue. I think that's an Old Blue. Nope, that's the limited edition. And then the XL 800 is all tucked away back there. Some of my camping gear has managed to survive. There's another box, or shelf of boxes. That's mostly used parts. In fact, I think it's all used parts. Started off trying to sort them by model and uh, some models I've got too much for. If you need a 360 flywheel, yeah, yeah, we're overstocked. Probably not going to keep too many more of those. More parts. And then I've dedicated the lower shelf to my generator and a few spares. Got some saws laying in wait here, that little XEL 12. I'm just going to, I need to get the handguard for and that'll actually put in my collection that 330 won't last time I tried to run it it wouldn't run right so it's been sitting there waiting for me to get motivated again same thing with this little uh, Super 2 with the safety lever yeah it actually runs pretty good but it's the one that's got the broken broken mount right there so and no UT number on it other than that it's a beautiful looking saw if somebody wanted to go to the trouble of replacing the case I don't need to because I've got a different one now. Bar waiting for a chain. Got the hardware, some more Super XL stuff tucked away. Paint, what I've got kept on hand. Can't see back there real well, but I do have some primers, some clear, and the red and green and white all waiting for a project. A lot of the tool crib. Not stocked with a huge amount of stuff but it's pretty much everything I need. Vacuum testing stuff. I need to need to figure out a better way to store all of this because I've started accumulating the, the block off rubber for the various uh, various size ports and you know, I need to get that all contained a little bit better. The hose kits that I sell. There's my cheat sheet when I come out here. Hoses, spark plugs, more parts. Home light zip. I believe that's a zip B. I'd have to go back and take a look. But that's one that's in the collection that I just haven't really 
Never could decide if I was going to repaint it or not. It's got just enough paint to make the decision hard, so needless to say, it's sat right there. But it did run, and I'm sure it still does. More parts all the way up, or all the way on the right, are a few empty boxes I keep on hand for the, the mid sized parts that won't fit in an envelope. Hardware drawer, that's all screws and nuts and bolts and stuff. A lot of body parts down there, and then I've got a bunch of stuff here that I need to <laughs> find some time to work on. The This 550 is the one that has the blown piston and cylinder. That's complete garbage, but there, the rest of it needs to be stripped down, and I'll sell most of that. That box is an XL875, or at least most of an 875. There was a guy who was parting one out several two or three years ago on eBay and I bought up most of the important stuff that I didn't already have like the body parts and you know all of that and I've been working with Sugar Creek to try and get some reproduction decals uh, we're, we're a year into that process so we'll, we'll see May I may just assemble it someday and, and run it as is and call it good if I remember right it did have an ID tag on the tank so that, that was pretty cool the 530N I've just got to get back to when I have time it is uh, not in the, the, it needs paint, I've got the decals and all that. I'm also seeing that my camera battery is not going to hold up as well as I was hoping. So, yeah, there's still got some carburetor issues on that. I have had it running, it just hasn't run super well. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and let this camera charge a little bit and then we will come back to finish the tour. Okay, that ought to be enough battery power to get us through this. While uh, that was charging, I got that box had been full of parts sitting over there. Got all those put away into the various shelves and bins where they belong. <clears throat> got this tank mostly cleaned up. Looks a hell of a lot better, doesn't it? And this cylinder and crankcase. That is not a steel chainsaw in there. That's my Greenworks battery powered saw. If you guys are interested in that, look back through the channel. There's <clears throat> a couple videos on it. Continuing our tour of parts. Once I'd filled up that mess over there, put in the shelf here. And uh, yeah, got manuals and all that kind of stuff. Some McCulloch parts in that bin, and then a bunch of string trimmer stuff in these other ones. String trimmer and Jacobson. You know, a couple boxes of Jacobson down there that don't move quick, but when guys need them, they're happy to see them. Hardware continued over here, the stuff that I had way too much of to keep in a, you know, envelopes and drawers. Some of my own stuff I've kind of put together, my collection, various files, the Terry home light oil is always a fun one. Some of the grommets, grease gun, the hard hat is in particularly nice shape. Needs a uh, needs a new kind of carrier on the inside. That old material is kind of starting to deteriorate, but it's still fun. Uh, I've got this shelf of crap, which isn't all saw parts. Got my chains and cables down there, and some of my cutting gear you can see hanging here but uh, more McCulloch parts through here and then some Poulon uh, there's a little bit of Wisconsin stuff that I picked up just on accident it was mixed in with other home light stuff and you know what are you gonna do so kind of the miscellaneous shelf here now we get back to more home light stuff my little uh, water bug pump I need to Drain the fuel and put it away for the season. I use that to empty the swimming pool each year, the above ground pool. Neighbors probably don't care for it too much, but what the hell, gives it some run time. So again, more boxes of parts. I designed this shelf and built it myself. It's on casters, just uh, I was still under the illusion that my garage wasn't gonna turn into part storage. How wrong was I there? Keep the bar shop in the corner. Got it on casters too, so it's easy to just wheel it out front when I need to do a little bar grinding. 
blast cabinet is buried behind all the Christmas stuff right now. Another week or so, this will all get packed up and go back to the storage unit. So I'll be able to find that again. I've got pieces of an XL104 in the cabinet and up top that are waiting for some blasting and restoration. There's that 2100S that uh, I just did the video on. Haven't uh, haven't found a location for it yet, plus I want to run it, and I'm holding out hope that I'm going to get out soon and do it. Uh, some of that New Hampshire parts lot, and there's actually some buried further back behind as well, and then another, I don't know, 10 boxes or so in the storage unit that uh, when the Christmas stuff goes back, I'll bring it here, at least most of it. I think that is a shipment of parts from my buddy over in uh, the United Kingdom, Gordon. I haven't even gotten into that. A few things that I picked up over the over the summer, boxes of parts, just lots that looked interesting. The most current shelf that I'm working on filling. I can't go much more than this. I'm just out of space, but uh, these aren't all full yet. I'm only full up to here, so. I'll definitely get the New Hampshire parts all contained in here, and then, uh, yeah. I don't know what happens after that. My XL500, I've been keeping it down. That's the, the runner one that I put the Archer bar on. Done some work with uh, the chain on that, and uh, I've been working on for the last, I don't know, year, year and a half, as I have time, the filing square grind by hand. Uh, that, that's the true chisel and I can't wait to get that thing out and do some cutting with it so that's the parts bear with me for a second here while I try to get a ladder out without causing a catastrophe you guys are probably wondering where the hell are all the chainsaws and I'm going to answer that question here well there's the one that damn grommet pulled out of the banner. I still have to fix that. But there's that one. That's the XP 1130 I restored a few years ago that you guys see as a parts dryer. Got my 750 where I can get to it. Same thing with the 650. Because those still get used. Now there's going to be some cobwebs up here because I keep that light on. Oh my god. Those spiders are having a field day building a mess over all these saws but this little loft not so little loft is where a huge chunk of the now dusty collection resides I'm not too worried about dust and cobwebs like this it's dry and almost all of these saws got my you know a nice coat of wax on them so when it comes time to blow these off most of them will look almost as good as when I put them up here yeah that's but damn have those spiders taken over that's crazy it's almost like some haunted house crap so that's part of it see a few poking out there I've had to expand because this addiction as you guys know well, they don't call it an addiction without a reason. Once you get started, how in the world do you ever stop? Bear with me, I'm going to attempt to navigate the damn ladder over here as well. You can see up in the rafters, I can get past that LED light. We've got more saws. There's that uh, XL Mini Floating Power that I was just working on. My other restored XL500 that I ran at TJ's is back up there. It has a very slow bar oil leak that I think is finally about done leaking. I was getting tired of coming in here and stepping on a puddle. Not a puddle, but like a dime size thing of oil each day during the summer. Get this set up. And then here as 
old Paul Harvey would say, is the rest of the story. Now this will be dark. That's the 995D that I finished over the summer, the Pioneer, and then lots and lots of home lights. I've got them hanging. Got them sitting on plywood. That's the my original 870 out there. I'm waiting for, uh, hopefully Joe will be able to do some decals for that one as well. I'd like to repaint it. Oh, way down at the end is that beautiful, uh, just regular 500. And the farm saw is kind of poking out way on yonder there. So yeah, in case you guys wondered if I was insane, I want to remove any doubt. I am. I've got way too many saws. That's the XP-1000 that we did that pine tree with earlier in the year. That's the C-72 with the automatic oiler and then the regular C-72. Oh uh, yeah. And then I'm hugging the bar to the 2000 automatic. That's also waiting for a paint and restore. There's the Super 1130G that's going to stay exactly the way it is. Super XL automatic, a blue one there. Yeah, it is insanity, folks. So that, in a nutshell, is my shop, which again is a two-car garage built in 1965. I guarantee you the original owners and whoever built this had no idea that some knucklehead would go and do all of this to it. Oh, anyhow, when you're on my website and you place an order, I'm going to end up coming out here looking for most of it. In the office itself, I've got uh, the small parts. I've got a wall of these bins that have been just divided out and uh, by envelope in there. But there's not a whole big reason to go in there. So anyhow, folks, still got to replace the and fluorescent tube in the sign so that it would come on again. This is Leon's Chainsaw Parts and Repair in a nutshell. I'm thinking about a, a 40 by 80 shop would be more appropriate. <laughs>